Hey everybody, Doug here. Uh, I've got a little bit of an announcement to make. Uh, nothing bad, don't worry about that. But wanted to let you guys know that I am actually going to be replacing the intercom system in my trailer. And if you follow this channel, you know that I have been using a system that I put together myself. It's been based for the last few years around a Behringer X32 mixer and using Dante to get audio between belt packs and camera operators and whatever, you know, so I'm sure there's going to be a few of you out there saying, I told you so, you should have used a standard off-the-shelf system instead of inventing your own. But in reality, that's not at all why I'm replacing it. The main reason I'm replacing it is because I need more of what I've got. So that Behringer X32, it's a 32-channel mixer. I need more than that. So I'm upgrading, I'm moving on, moving to something bigger and better, and I'll show you guys what that is. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there wondering what kind of equipment might it be that I would use to run an intercom other than a dedicated intercom unit. Well, in this case, I'm using this piece of equipment right here. This is called a, a digital signal processor, and this happens to support, support Dante and some analog input as well. I'll take you on a tour of this thing here in a minute. But the bottom line is this thing, well, out of the box, it doesn't do anything. You have to program it with what you want it to do. And I'll demonstrate here what that looks like in the software that comes with this. And bas but basically, I'm able to use a whole bunch of different building blocks in order to build out what would be, if I was doing things in the analog world, it could be dozens and dozens of pieces of equipment and chaining signal from one to the next to the next to the next and using that combination of different modules in order to build out the functionality that I need. In this case, I built out what is essentially four PLs for party lines, some auxiliary mixers, uh, some other processing, so I'm uh, going to do IEM, proce I IEM stuff. Uh, I'll d again, I'll demonstrate some of that here in this video. And a whole lot more. Uh, so it knows how to look for the call signal that's present on intercoms and to relay that on or to even generate one so that we can flash the light on intercom belt packs or whatever else. All right, for the most of the rest of this video, you're going to hear me talking through the intercom. Uh, it's going to sound not amazing, but that's mostly the fault of this microphone. It's not because any of this equipment is doing anything bad to the audio. Like the audio quality of this thing is actually extremely good. So it's processing at 48 kilo, kilohertz at 24 bit. And it's using the same DSP that you find in audio mixers all the way up and down the product line from all the sort of different manufacturers. So the same processing that's going on in here is what you see in a lot of high-end audio mixers. It's just that we've got access to a lot more of it and I'm able to use it any way that I want. Now, with all that said, I should probably introduce what this piece of equipment actually is. So this unit right here, it's actually an older unit. They've, they've replaced this with a newer one since. But this is by a company called Symmetrix. This is the Radius AEC. And that AEC stands for Acoustic Echo Control. And I'll demonstrate what that is here in a little bit because it's actually a super cool feature. And it's super handy for what I'm going to be doing with this thing as my intercom uh, base station, effectively. So anyway, but this actually has... Uh, I'll, Take, take you on a tour in a minute, but it has a ton of processing inside it, um, and 64 channels of Dante input, 64 channels of Dante output, 12 channels of analog input, 8 channels of analog output. It has an interface interface for VOIP phones, and it has a bunch of generic on-off external control uh, inputs and outputs on it as well. So a lot, there's a lot that I can do with this, and in, in terms of making it do its thing. There's a piece of software that's called Composer that uh, is actually made by the company, and you design what you want the unit to do inside that software. So uh, I'll get to that in one, one second, but for right now, I'm going to kind of unplug things a little bit and then take you on a tour of what's going on, what's going on here. All right, so this is the Symmetrix Radius AEC. It's part of uh, it's one of three product lines that Symmetrix has that does this. They're not the only company that makes this, this type of equipment. I'll show you another one here in a little bit. But it's a, a digital signal processor with Dante inputs and outputs on it, which makes it very, very, very cool. So uh, I picked this up used on eBay. I wasn't 100% sure if it was going to be the right solution, so I didn't want to dump a money, bunch of money into it. But I'm super happy with it. Uh, I could upgrade to something newer, but this works, and the newer ones don't do much much more. So I'm going to stick with this for the time being. All right, so take a look. Front panel, we have a display, five buttons, and a bunch of LEDs indicating activity, and that's really about it. Uh, there is a menu system on here, but it's super basic. doesn't do very much, and so I'm not going to bother taking you through that. I'll flip around to the back. That's where, that's where the business end of this guy is. So we have uh, an arc alloy here. Uh, I'll get into more of that 
later. We've got my Dante connections here. There's uh, redundant connections. It can either be redundant or it can be a switch that was passed through. And you've got two redundant Ethernet connections. Actually, again, it's a switch. RS-232 connection, which I'm not going to be using, but allows you to control the unit over an RS-232 serial interface. Then we've got a series of uh, external inputs and outputs. These are basically on-off signals and uh, you can control what these do within the software. I'll take you through some of that. And then we've got some analog I.O. here. We've got some analog line outputs on this one and analog line inputs over here. We have four channels that are just normal and then eight channels that are part of this AEC or acoustic echo cancellation technology that I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, there's an, uh, an option card installed in this one for a, a VOIP interface, which allows me to have this thing log into the telephone system. So what that, what that allows me to do is actually have telephone calls be included as part of my intercom system. I've tested it. It works great. It allows me to have remote people join on in my intercom system just by calling in on their phone. And I've got it pre-programmed to dial into my conference bridge that I have. And so it's a conference call that anybody can join. In addition to that, because this is Dante based, I could actually have this be connected to Zoom or Discord or Unity Intercom or any of those and be able to do remote intercom that way. So anyway, so there's not that much going on in terms of connect connectivity here, but the big thing here is that it has Dante which and 64 channels in, 64 channels out. So that's a lot of audio and that is able to go in and out on a single ethernet connection. Now I want to mention that one of the things I get, I get complimented on on my, uh, my intercom systems a lot is the fact that people that are on the intercom can actually hear program audio. So you know what's going on. But we don't want that to be intrusive. We don't want it to get in the way. We always want the, the technical director or whoever else is talking to take precedence over what's going on with the program audio. And so I've done that here as part of the programming of this. And I'm, using, I'm talking into my intercom system right now, and you're, that's exactly what you're hearing. Because I want you guys to hear what the quality of the audio is like. Uh, I'm going to turn the music on in here in just, just a second, so you'll be able to experience what it's like for somebody who's in the, sitting in the trailer with the headsets on and being able to participate and hear what's what's happening with the program as well as technical director. So I'll turn that on. Okay, there we go. Now you hear that there's music going on in the background, but as long as I'm talking, it gets brought down to a pretty low level. But the minute that I stop, it'll get ramped back up. So I'll let you hear that. And then the minute I start talking, it automatically ramps down again. This is that unit doing this thing, doing that automatically. I don't have to, nobody's riding a fader, anything like that. It's all happening completely automatically. And that will happen for anybody who talks on that particular party line. So it's a super handy feature to allow people to be able to hear what's going on with the program, but still uh, always make sure that any direction that they need to receive is going to be heard and it's going to be clear and it's going to be audible. One of the things that I love about this most is it has an, an automa automatic mixer in it. So basically what that allows me to do is to have all the microphones for all, everybody's on a belt pack just left open if they need to be. And then whenever somebody is talking, the level of everybody else automatically gets turned down. So, well, it's a little more complicated than that, but it keeps the level of, of uh, mics relatively low until somebody speaks. And then it brings that one up and then brings everybody else's down. As a result, you don't have a lot of background noise going on and things are consistent with levels and it just sounds so much better than anything else. Not automatic mixers are available in other places like my X32 actually has it but it's limited to eight channels and with this one I can do a lot more than that and with the fact of the programming that I've got in here right now it's let's see that's 16 plus 12 plus 8 plus 8 so that, that whatever that works out to be that's how many channels of auto mixing i have going on and i could do more i'm, I'm not using this thing as full capability there's actually more than than what i'm what i'm ask, asking it to do all right so we're looking here at the composer software which is used to design what the whatever audio processing is going on inside of this thing and it isn't just audio it actually has a lot more capabilities as well you can do a lot with control signals so on off signals or even like an analog very variable uh, value signal uh, to control audio modules and input and output and also all of this stuff can be controlled from outside the unit uh, over the network if you can write your own software to do it you can uh, communicate over tcp you can communicate over rs232 you can communicate over RD, uh, udp 
there is a companion module that will work with this. Um, it's sort of an older one, hasn't been touched for a while, but it does work. It just works, works just fine. And it's super easy to control this thing externally. Uh, but the beauty of this thing is you can build whatever signal flows you want, whatever processing you want, and do it within the software. So what we're looking here is the, the design for what I'm tentatively going to be using for my intercom. I know I'm going to tweak it because I tweak it every time I use it. But there, you can tell there's a lot going on here. So the signal flow in my design kind of goes left to right. Over here on the left, we've got my 64 channels of Dante in. Come up a little higher, we've got eight channels of analog in, uh, for another additional eight channels of analog in here. So for my design, my eight channels of analog in are going to be the eight stations in my trailer. And they're gonna be, it's going to be connected directly to microphones just like this. This has pretty good audio preamps built right into it, so I don't have to run it through a separate preamp and then bring it into this unit. I'll literally just be able to plug these things directly into the back of this. It'll, bo it'll boost the level up to where it needs to be and then send it on for further processing. Now, as we look the, through what's going on with the signals here, they come in on the inputs here on the left and then I route them immediately into a routing routing a unit. So, um, let's see if I can get this to actually zoom. There we go. All right, so if we look at this, I have 96 audio inputs and 64 audio in, or outputs on this guy. And I can route those any way that I want. So if I double click on this, it'll bring up this other window. I need to zoom out just a little bit on that. It, uh, so this allows me to change what signal is being sent to any of those the 64 outputs. So if we, for example, let me go for, over to the left here. So if I look at outputs one through three, those go into my first PL or party line. And uh, so it's part PL 1-1 TD, and TD means technical director. And come down here, we've got director. Come down a little bit further, we've got uh, FA, that's uh, front audio booth, that's this, this desk right here, and so forth. So come over here to four through six, and that's where we start to see uh, RP uh, replay, um, AB for audio booth, CG for C, uh, character graphics, and so forth. So I've got the first eight of the inputs on this coming from the various stations around the trailer. And we get a little bit further down, we get to input number nine. It's called the ONPL 1-9, and that comes in on Dante. So that could be anything. But in my case, I'm going to be having that come through, come from the camera operators that are on, that are using the Blackmagic Design camera converters, ATEM camera converters. And that audio from those first four camera operators comes over fiber from the cameras into a studio converter, Blackmagic studio converter here in the trailer. And then the output of that comes out as digital using AES, and that goes into an Avio module from Audinate, which converts it to Dante, and from Dante it comes into here, and then it gets mixed with other sources. So PL1-9 is going to be cameras 1 through 4, and then we come over to PL1-10, that's going to be cameras 5 through 8. And then from there, I can start to include belt packs, you know, these sorts of things, from studio technologies, or I can, I'll start, I can include my Hollyland uh, wireless intercom units as well that, that has an analog input and output on it. And I've got those, these Audinate Avio adapters that let me bring the, that audio in as well. And then I've got an adapter that let me, lets me connect into Clearcom. So I can bring in all these different sources and route them accordingly into the various inputs that I have uh, on my PL mixer. So, the, but this routing thing allows me to send any signal from anywhere to anywhere else. The nice thing about that is I can have, say for example, the technical director in the spot that I'm sitting right now, that's going to be on input one. Normally that might go into PL1, but I can use companion to press a button and have the audio temporarily be rerouted into PL number two on input number 16 or whatever, whatever it is, like, or 17 or whatever I have set up here in my design. And as long as I'm holding that button down, I'll, I will be talking, or a technical director will be talking to the second party line instead of the first. Then let that button up, and, it, and then it'll reroute that audio back into PL number one. Likewise, I can use that to talk to an IEM system. So I've got on air talent, and we need to, to, to communicate with them and let them know, it's like, hey, you've got five seconds or whatever, or you know, we've got an emergency, we need to announce, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, we can talk to the on-air talent and let them know. It's like, hey, we need, we need your attention or whatever. And that can all be controlled from Companion, routed from, through this device right here without having to change any of the Dante routing in and of itself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. But you kind of get the idea with that. So the output of, of that input matrix 
goes into party line mixers. Now, it's going to be a little bit confusing here. So these these gray things right here, these are actually vias. So there's not, no actual processing in that. What that does is just allows me to send signals from one part of the diagram to somewhere else without having to have all the wires show up and just make a complete mess of things. So PL1N is what I call the, those first 15 channels. And you can see that those come over here to here and here. So it's making two copies of that signal. And that's coming into, first of all, this CD sum. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. And then I've got my main PL number one audio, audio mixer right here. Now this is an auto mixer, like I referred to earlier, in that it will adjust the levels. I mean, uh, there we go. So I'm currently talking on channel 10 right now. But it'll adjust the levels for the various inputs based on what's going on. So the active speaker gets more volume than everybody else. And if there's two people speaking, it will bring down the... It'll bring both of them up. It'll bring down the level of the first person just a little bit so your total level is consistent and it stays consistent as long as anybody's talking. But that reduces a lot of the background noise. It also keeps the audio level very even uh, over time and makes sure that nobody's ears are getting blown out. And again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this unit has a lot of different audio auto mixer channels on it. I haven't even maxed it out. And... That's something that you can't get with a lot of the audio mixers that are kind of in this price range within this segment of the market. So pretty darn amazing there. As part of this, it also has uh, the ability to generate multiple outputs simultaneously. So uh, if we go back here to my diagram, a PL mixer, it's got all these outputs. Um, these are direct outputs of what's going on with each of those microphones. So as I'm talking, if I was able to show you easily the signal, so I mentioned I was on 1-10, so my signal is actually going through this wire right here, and it's going into this mixer, it's getting combined with anybody else who's on uh, party line number one, and then sent to the mix output. Uh, I'm not quite using that, really. Uh, I'll one second and I'll get to that. But yeah, so so this effectively is just controlling all the levels of all those things, and then I pass that on to another unit for to actually do the final blending of those together into one one single signal. And that's over here. It's uh, I initially called it my mix minus mixer, but it actually does a lot more than that now, so I'll just go ahead and open that up. This is a matrix mixer, so we've got our different inputs here across the left, and the various in, our outputs across the top. And so, for example, I'm again on one one dash 10. So my audio is going to outputs number one, it's skipping number two, going to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now the mix of all the people that are on party line number one is actually on output number ten. And I don't get to the diagram show you where that is, but you notice that that has everything except the call signal and, and uh, also the program audio. So program audio is not included at this point. So, but, but, so anybody on party line number one is going to be included in that mix, PL1 mix, and then I'll show you the, here in the diagram where that goes next. So we've got PL1 mix right here. I know it's going to be hard to see. Maybe I should zoom in just a little bit more, if it'll let me. There. All right, and then we follow that wire down, and that comes down to... All right, so that's this sort of reddish one here. That comes over to an equalizer, and I'll double click and, and still see what that is currently set to do. So I've got it roll, rolling off lower frequencies, and then just a very slight presence boost uh, for the sibilance up at about 2.5k. And I'll actually, just make an adjustment on that so you can kind of hear. So I'll, I'll just bring the gain. There. Yeah, so it got quiet, and all the high frequencies are gone. So yeah, so you're hearing this actually being adjusted in real time. Now I probably want to. Uh, to uh, narrow that band a little bit, but they asked if I adjust that. It's, it's just adjusting a much narrower range of frequencies. But so so yeah, so it's going goes into an EQ and does a roll off here to try and get any, rid of any rumble, low frequencies that we don't need as part of speech. From the from there, we take the output of that equalizer and we come over here into a compressor, and this keeps the level nice and consistent. You can see that we've so here's the output level of me talking, and there's a little bit of gain reduction going on there. So after I, as I reach a certain level, it starts reducing the level, the audio level, the volume, uh, in order to keep it for, for cons so, so consistent. Uh, so if I could really get up on the mic and start talking, you can see that the, the gain reduction is bringing me down a lot, but I didn't get a lot louder in your ears. It keeps it in check, and so if somebody gets excited, uh, there's a loud noise of any kind, it will kind of help help to keep that 
from being distracting, keeping it from distorting, whatever. So so we've got the the com, uh, com, compressor that's handling that, and then from there we're going to go ahead and move down the rest of the chain. So the output of the compressor, uh, first of all, I need to show that it goes around this and go, finally goes into the the final master mixer, which I'll get to in a moment. But this, this unit right here is a ducker, and that's what I demonstrated a little bit earlier. Uh, so when I talk, the program audio actually gets reduced in volume. So if I open this thing up, you can see that I've got... Uh, they're, they're, they're basically the curve. So as my level exceeds this point right here, it brings down the level of the program audio. So it's a stereo program, and then my mono, monaural... Uh, input for uh, for the side chain, which is basically the the signal that it that keys off of. So when I'm talking, uh, it brings down the level of the program audio, and then when I stop, it brings it back up. And as as we were listening to it a moment ago, if you could hear that it would hold the level quiet for about one second after I stopped talking, and then it would ramp it back up for about a half second. And those settings are in here, and I can control that as part of this. So if we find that it's too aggressive and turning on and off too too often and it's distracting, I'll just come in here and change those settings. All right, so continue the signal chain a little bit further down here. So remember we've got the speech, the, the uh, intercom itself coming out of here and then going around and coming into my master mixer. And then we've also got the duct program audio. So the program audio has been, it's been reduced in level every time I speak. And that's coming into the master mixer over here as well. And I'll double click and open this thing up and you'll be able to see kind of what's going on with that. So from here I'm building several different mixes. So I've got PL1 mix, which is a com combination of program audio and everybody that's on PL number one. And I've got PL1 vox, which is just the people, no, no music, no program audio. And then PL2 mix, PL2 vox, PL3 mix, PL4 three vox, PL4 mix, PL4 vox. So for, again, 40, four party lines that are basically the same, just vary in the number of channels. And then I've got some PL, various uh, PL auxes that I can build. Um, I may or may not get to that in this video. And then I've got four separate program outputs that I can I can pass along to somewhere else in the chain as well. So but these little green boxes here indicate which signals are being merged in as part of this mix. You can see over here with the with, uh, PL1 uh, program. Uh, that was reduced in level by 10 decibels, and that keeps the that program audio where it's not blaring and just overpowering you. So, but if if we find that we need to adjust that, that's where I can do that here. So, anyway, and then from there, it goes over into uh, signal combiner, or our summer actually is what they call it. So it's going to take the left and right audio, merge that into one, and create a monaural signal, and then we come over here to the final Dante output. I got PL1 left, PL1 right, PL1 mono, those all include program audio, and then PL1 vox. So I actually have an output on Dante that is just the speech portion without the program audio as well. And I'll, I'll demonstrate why that's cool here when I pull out the belt packs here in a moment. So basically, but I have the same sort of functionality for all four PLs, uh, more or less. It's, the main difference is the number of channels. You can see that in PL number one, I've got basically 16 channels. One of those is the VOIP, so uh, anybody on, on phone, and then come down to two, and that's uh, 12 channels, and then three and four are each eight channels. But I could do more. I, I still have a lot of processing left in here, uh, so if I find that that's not enough channels on any of those PLs, I can just go in here and edit this, make them bigger, make them do more things, handle more channels. All right. Now, in addition to all of that, I've also got some just kind of utility, general utility functions. And uh, I've got some IFB duckers in here. So if I'm building up an IFB mix somewhere else, say, say my Yamaha mixer, I can bring that into here and have it do the ducking. That's what this section is down here. So I can do basically do three separate IEMs. Uh, so they all would share the same program audio, but they can have different people speaking. So if we wanted to have three on-air personalities, and be able to speak to them separately, individually, I can do that through here. But again, if I need more, it's just a matter of basically copying and pasting with these modules that I've got in here and uh, just 
increasing the, the number of channels that I'm processing. I've also got some other utility stuff here, like I've got a one kilohertz sine wave generator. So if I need a need a test signal somewhere on, on my network, it's there. I've got white noise, I've got pink noise there as well. In addition to all of that, I also have the ability to use this acoustic echo cancellation and uh, give me just a, mom a moment here and I'll get I'll do a demonstration of that but it's a really cool te technology that can be used to try and remove program audio or whatever audio signal from another audio signal so in, say for example I've got somebody that's wearing a headset like this that's inside the venue music is playing it, the, a, music, a lot of that music is coming through the microphone this AEC technology allows me to remove a lot of that background noise. So I would feed it the audio from the microphone. I would also feed it a copy of the audio that's being played in the venue. And this is able to figure out how much delay there is and what the echoes are and frequency changes and phase changes and things like that in order to sort of subtract that out. And it works pretty well. So, but again, I'll demonstrate that here in just a moment. In addition to that, I've also just got some general purpose audio mixers in here. So if I need to combine a couple channels, you know, Dante in and of itself can't merge two channels on an input, but that's something that I need to do fairly often. So I've got some places set up here in order to accomplish that. And so, yeah, uh, the other thing I want to mention is that I do support the call signals that are used as part of Dante intercoms, which is kind of a holdover from the analog days. But on a lot of uh, belt packs and other inter intercom units, there is a call button. And what that does is we'll play a tone and flash a light on other, on other boxes to get the attention of somebody who maybe doesn't have their headset on. Like, for example, if you've got a guy that's doing audio, they're not going to be wearing their intercom headset all the time. So you very often set them up with an alert light and when you need their attention you press the call button it'll flash the light they'll know hey I, I need to get on jump on intercom and somebody can talk to me so I've actually got that capability in here and this belt button the pack that I'm using right now doesn't have that capability but some of the other ones do and I've got this section up here that listens for that 20 kilohertz signal and when it detects it it regenerates it uh, and and then holds it high for uh, one full second. So if just someone very quickly taps the button, um, it will actually light up the call lights on everybody's box for one full second. But again, totally, totally configurable here. And I just did that by using a. Let's see what this is. This unit is a uh, high pass filter. And so I'm, I'm basically getting rid of everything below 18 kilohertz and just listening for 20 kilohertz. And then from there, it goes into a level detector to see what, how loud that signal is. And then from there, the output of that level signal is passed through a couple of logic gates. And it finally comes over here into basically what amounts to an on-off switch, which uh, controls the output of this 20 kilohertz. There it is. 20 kilohertz. Uh, sine wave that I, I can mix in as well. So anyway, there's it looks like there's a lot going on, and then and there is a lot going on, but fundamentally it's just a lot of the same thing repeated over and over. But the cool thing is I can do all this in this unit right here and no more. So all this is happening inside this box, and it's low power and a lot of lot, lot, tons of processing power, but doesn't consume a lot of power and takes up a lot less space than my Behringer X32, but yet does so, so, so much more with a lot more flexibility. With the, with the X32, I was just super frustrated with the number of input channels. It's pretty awful internal signal routing and the fact that it only really had 14 output, 14 output channels in total. So this one way exceeds that and it's going to allow me to do so much more. I've had a number of situations where that X32 just wasn't enough for whatever I was needing to do. You know, I had an event I was doing a couple of years ago where uh, I needed to provide part, three, three separate party lines, and, but I needed to do some really weird things with the mixes. So even though someone, you might have five people that are, that are on a single party line, like one of those people might want to hear more than what's going on on party line. They also might want, might want to hear what's going on from the stage manager or something like that. So I need to create a separate mix for them. And that's difficult to do with the X32, but I can totally pull that off with this unit right here. So... Okay, so um, that's kind of the gist of it. Now, I mentioned that this is not the only unit that's like this, and uh, I'll clean up just a little bit here and show you a couple of the others. All right, I have another unit from Symmetrix, and uh, bring that out. Here it is. This is the Symmetrix Prism 4x4, 
Even though this is smaller, it has all of the same signal processing capability as this bigger unit, every little bit of it. The main difference here is the number of analog inputs and outputs, and it doesn't have an expansion card that you can put it like a VOIP uh, or other uh, adapter into. So let's take a look at the back here. So we've got ARC, which is for remote control. Again, I'm not really going to get into that here. We've got our Dante connection. We have an Ethernet for control. And then we've got our uh, external I.O. controls and four inputs of uh, analog audio, audio output and four channels of analog audio input. But again, this has all of the same signal processing as this, so I could quite literally just tweak this design a little bit to remove the analog references and upload it into this and have all those same capabilities in this unit. So my plan with this one is actually to basically build something that's very, very similar to what I'm doing for my trailer, but I'll use this whenever I'm producing with my fly pack, and I, I'm not with, I, I'm not using my trailer for a given event. That's been kind of a struggle, like finding good intercom when I don't have my trailer. This is going to solve that, and so I'll be able to have all these cool capabilities from this unit right here. And I won't be missing the analog stuff because I don't have eight eight desks around that I need to be doing preamp for. I'll, I'll be I'll have everybody on Dante, so I won't even be using the analog on this guy. Okay, so anyway, so that's again same. Same uh, manufacturer as this unit. This one's a lot newer, but the processing capabilities are more or less exactly the same. The next one I want to show is another rack mount unit like this one, but it's from another manufacturer. So I'll go ahead and bring that out. This one is from a company called Biamp, and this one is, uh, there we go, straighten that out. This one is called the Tessera Forte Dan VT. The Dan portion means it's Dante. They've got a lot of different technologies they, they support. Dante being one of them. They also support AVB and a couple other things as well. But Dante was what I wanted, and so I picked this unit up. Now, uh, the biggest difference between this one and the radius that I showed first is it has half the number of Dante channels. So 32 inputs, 32 outputs, which that's still going to work for an awful lot of different situations. But I discovered pretty early on that for what I'm trying to do, that wasn't going to be quite enough. And so I had everything working on this and decided, no, nah, I need something bigger. That's when I looked into... The radius but this one uh, I like the software that Biamp does a lot better it's easier to use it's prettier it's faster uh, in terms of number of available modules it's a little bit lower in terms of uh, what this can do but nothing nothing super significant uh, in terms of functionality differences between the two so you know, if you're looking for to looking to buy one of these things 32 channels would be enough I wouldn't hesitate to, to recommend this one. It will work just fine as well. So anyway, but again, uh, digital signal processors that uh, use Dante for a lot of their, their audio inputs and outputs. Uh, I also should mention that this one, this particular model includes a lot of analog inputs and outputs on the, well, on the back as well. So 12 channels of analog inputs and eight channels of analog outputs. And this also has the telephone telephone line, analog telephone line, and it has VOIP as well. And this one adds a USB audio connection on top of the other ones too. So that was actually going to be really cool to like be able to like hook zoom in or whatever directly with USB. And the newer radius from Symmetrix, this guy uh, actually does have USB. It's just this, this older one that I bought does not. One more thing I wanted to demo before I go was the acoustic echo cancellation feature that I mentioned earlier. And right now I have my voice being routed through it, but I have the effect disabled. So the in intent of this is to be able to get rid of background noise, like music or whatever that's being played in the room. So what you're hearing right now is music that's coming through the speakers that are here on the front wall on my trailer, and it's just being picked up by the microphone. There's no direct feed uh, whatsoever. So it's just, just the ambient sound right here in the room. Now, in a second here, I'm going to turn on the AEC, and you'll notice that a lot of that's going to go away. It's not going to go away entirely, but it's, a lot of it's going to go away. So I'll go ahead and click on that button to enable it. Okay, there we go. So AEC is now turned on. So the music is still playing just as loud as it was before, and I'm still having to talk loud to feel comfortable with the amount of background noise that I'm hearing in my, in my, just in my ears. Uh, but, but yeah, is it, what this does is it, you, you feed it the copy of the microphones that are in the room, and you also feed it the copy of audio that's being played in the room that you want it to try and get rid of and it's able to sort of adjust the uh, compensate for the amount of delay for the signal propagating through the room and also compensates for frequency changes frequency response changes and for any sort of echo in the room it's not perfect 
but it's a lot better than not having it whatsoever. So you can imagine being in a situation where you've got camera operators who are at a concert and the music is even louder than this. And if you didn't have this sort of technology, you might not be able to hear them at all on headsets whatsoever, even if you get super, super good headsets that are really designed for that kind of environment. But, but this is a nice auxiliary thing that we can do with a lot of these digital signal processors to try and clean up the audio and make it a little bit easier to hear what, what's going, what a camera operator or someone else on your crew actually happens to be saying at the time. So um, I know you're not able to hear it super well, but the music is, is playing and it's, it's actually still pretty loud here in the room, even though a lot of it's being canceled and removed. So just, just for reference, I'll turn the AEC back off again. There you go. So that's with AEC off and uh, you're going to hear a lot more of the music coming through. So anyway, that's AEC for you. Okay, one more thing that I want to demonstrate is using this system with kind of some more traditional intercom equipment. And so I've switched to this Biodynamic DT109 headset. You see these things everywhere. They're ubiquitous and they've been used for decades. And uh, just a classic unit. Uh, reasonably good rejection of outside sounds and they're able to get them, you're able to get the microphone fairly close to your mouth and it has very good fairly good rejection of everything else in the room. Not the greatest sound quality, but uh, but it's serviceable. And so I've got this headset going into a Studio Technologies uh, belt pack. This is the model 374A, M374A. And this is a, a four channel unit. So I've currently got this mapped, and I'll switch to the overhead camera here. I've currently got this mapped to uh, input one coming from party line one, PL1, two coming from party line two, three, uh, I'm not, it's I get audio from PL3, uh, but I'll I'll show what I'm doing with the the push button here in a moment, and then input four. The input on this one is actually program audio, so what that allows me to do is to well the person who's using it to adjust the level of the program audio in their headset. So if they don't want to hear it at all, they can just turn it down, or if they want to hear a lot of it, they can turn it up. That audio program audio is actually ducked according to what's going on on PL1, uh, so. The moment, moment somebody starts talking on PL1, that audio does duck down even though it's on a separate input on here. So in, th in that way, it's kind of the same idea as having a single mix going to a, a body pack, but allow, in this case, send us two separate feeds where the, the where the user is able to adjust the level of the intercom PL audio versus the program audio themselves. So anyway, so so that's what's going on with the with the pinch on there. I know you can't hear it, but in my ears, the program audio is going up and down. I still have music playing in the background. I know you can't hear it, but uh, so anyway, so I've got the program audio coming in on input number four. Now button number four, I actually have set up as a call button. So when I press this, you'll see uh, light number one flash. Let me just angle that to get, make that more visible. So I'll, I'll press press this. And you'll see that uh, the light there is flashing, and that's the call signal. That's how you get attention of somebody else who maybe doesn't have their headset on or is otherwise not paying attention. So you can hit press the call button, and that will alert them visually that something is going on. So that works in conjunction with that, whatever channel I have, I have enabled. So right now you're hearing me through PL1, and if I turn this off, you won't. So I'll go ahead and... You didn't hear me there for a moment. You're, again, you're hearing me through the PL itself. I can talk to one and two at the same time. Um, but the other thing I did here is I enabled button three to be an announcement channel, and that goes out to all the PLs. And right now I have four, but I could certainly do more, but it's an announcement channel, so I can go out to everybody. So what I'm going to do here momentarily is I'm going to turn off PL1, and then come on and make an announcement on PL3, and you'll still be able to hear me. There we go. So now I'm making an announcement, and that's going out to all the PLs simultaneously. It actually sounds a little bit different. I probably ought to tweak, look at my settings and see what I do different, differently there. But yeah, this is an announcement. It's going out to absolutely everybody. And I can also press button number four and do the call signal on all channels that way as well. All right, so switch, switch, I'll switch back to one. Okay, so there I am on one. And just, just for reference, uh, these headsets are set up such that if you press and hold, they'll, they'll trans, their, your audio will pass as, as long as you're holding down the button. Um, and then once you let go, it, it mutes again. But if you just tap, it's a toggle. So press and hold. And then as soon as I let go, it'll mute. Or just tap, and it'll, it'll lock and stay turned on. When, these don't have uh, the double tap to, to produce a call signal like some of the other ones that are out there, but not something that I use uh, that's a, a lot. So Anyway, so there you go. It's kind of a more traditional intercom belt pack used with very traditional uh, inter, uh, headset and uh, all integrated through this unit.
As I'll show in the back of this unit a little bit, I mentioned that it has some external control inputs and outputs, and uh, those are general purpose. You can do all sorts of cool, interesting things with them. So for example, I have uh, A and B on number one set to control the call signal on PL1 and 2. So I just have an external push, uh, push button, press the button, and that generates a call signal that goes out to those two uh, PL channels. But I could do anything that I wanted with it. Uh, this, this whole setup is actually very, very flexible. All these modules are controllable, and I don't think I want to get into all the details about that. This video is already long enough as it is. But any, any of the different signal or any of the different attributes of any of these modules can be controlled remotely. So whether that be a, a, a volume level or a gain or a pan position or uh, the feedback, uh, sorry, sorry, a, um, a amount of delay, all that stuff is remotely controllable, and uh, it's wired up very much the same way you do audio. So you literally drag and drop wires within the diagram. And all that is controllable, not just from the back panel, but from remote connections over TCP or UDP or RS-232. So you're able to control this unit from outside and do a lot of very interesting, very cool stuff. In addition to that, this actually has the capability of doing uh, what they call intelligent mod modules, where you have Lua programming code that runs inside the unit as well. So if you can't do what, you're, what you intend to do with simple AND or exclusive OR gates and that kind of thing, you can actually write code that runs within the unit in order to do much more sophisticated things. So pretty cool stuff going on there. This can actually... Uh, also initiate connect, connections out to the network. So if you want to, if you're a developer, software developer, or, or know a software developer that can help you out, you can have events going on inside this thing, triggering things out in the outside world, and that allows you to do some very cool stuff. Now, one of the things I, one of the very simple things that I want to do, I want to take some of the external outputs on this, and use that to actually put uh, call indicator lights here in the trailer. I've never had that capability here in the trailer, but it is useful. And so I could use the external outputs on this to drive some, uh, drive a relay, which controls some LEDs and uh, actually have lights flash whenever someone presses the call button. But any, any number of things is possible. Now, because it has all these remote control capabilities, you can use it with all sorts of different software. And BitFocus Companion actually has a module that runs with this. It hasn't been updated for BitFocus or for Companion version 3, but it does still work. But the, that software allows you to control any of those parameters that are inside this unit from Companion. So I don't have it set up here right in front of me, but one of the things I've done, I've got actually got a screen that I have on a stream deck where I can press different buttons to allow uh, my technical director position, for example, to be able to speak to a, a different PL. So pressing and holding the button reroutes the audio in that input matrix from an input on uh, PL1 to PL2 or another button to go to IFB, your IEMs or whatever. And uh, yeah, I can do any, any, just any, any of that kind of thing, rewriting signals uh, from within Companion. And it can actually respond to uh, triggers that are sent out from the device. So any of those parameters that you set in here, it can actually publish those and push those out to any device on the network that happen, happens to be listening to it and can respond in kind. So. Very flexible, very, very cool. Uh, a lot of capabilities there that you're just not going to find with traditional intercom equipment or professional audio equipment that's being used for intercom. So I'm super, super excited about the possibilities of what this is going to be able to do. Uh, this thing is super powerful. It's small and compact, and it does a lot in a very small space. I'm going to free up quite a bit of rack space here in my trailer. and reduce power consumption by switching to this instead of my Behringer X32. Okay, back to the shotgun mic for the final wrap-up, so you can kind of compare and compra contrast. But So anyway, so this is this is a godsend for what I've been trying to accomplish with, with Intercom. I felt so limited by the X32, and uh, just, it worked pretty well. Audio quality is amazing, and I, I get compliments about the quality of my Intercom all the time. I mean, people... Anybody who works in my trailer that's not part of my regular crew, they're kind of shocked by how, how good the intercom sounds. And I've always kind of take, taken a little bit of pride in that. The fact that I've been able to put together something on my own that does a better job than the so-called professional solutions that are out there and do so at a fraction of the cost. But I did feel a lot of pressure 
at times to expand it and give it more capabilities than what it had. And so this has op opened up that world. It's going to allow me to do that. And so I'm super, super glad that I found these products. So I've known for years that something like this had to exist, but I was not able to find it. I was, it turns out I was just looking in the wrong market. These are made for fixed audio, permanent install uh, type things, conference rooms and, and whatnot. And they're kind of unknown in the professional live audio world. So again, I was super fast. I was super, super excited when I actually find them. So uh, I know people are wondering, what does one of these things cost? Um, well, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because these things are not sold through normal retail channels. They're, they're more of a B2B product than rather than a B2C. And so you can't just go on to like B&H Photo or Marker Tech and buy them. They're, you got to call a sales rep and get a hold of somebody and they'll talk you through your needs and they'll try and find the right product for you. So I can't really divulge what the actual pricing is because I don't know. Uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't acquire mine through those channels. I actually purchased mine on eBay uh, as second-hand units. Uh, it was an experiment. I didn't know if it was going to work, so I bought them used. And turns out I love them. And I'm not going to replace them with newer ones because these, these are working. And I got them for pretty inexpensive. If you buy these things brand new, I know they're in the thousands. So uh, I think they're going to start around two thousand dollars for one of these things. And I, I know they go up from there. So I think you can spend. Four or five, four, five, four or five thousand dollars on one in order that if you're getting all the bells and whistles. So anyway, but I do think it's worth it. Uh, the capabilities you get with this are kind of amazing. So, so if this kind of thing is actually interesting to you, you can click on one of those links that's been popping up throughout the course of this video. That'll take you to the manufacturer website to get more information. And I've also got links to uh, take you to where you can find a sales rep for your particular area in the world. So both Biamp and uh, Symmetrix prefer that you go through the sales reps and they don't offer these products through normal retail channels. If you have questions about any of this, you can certainly leave those in the comment section down below. Or if you want to have a more lengthy discussion or talk to more people than just me, you can join us over on Discord. I have a server set up specifically for discussing topics about video production. That includes audio. Uh, audio is a huge part of my world, more than, more than most video guys. But yeah, so we've got a, a, a channel set up there to talk about things uh, as a group. And there's a lot of very smart people, no more than I do, uh, about all this stuff and are very willing to step in and help whenever they possibly can. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content as often as I possibly can. I've been a little bit slower in terms of getting content out recently. It's not because I haven't been shooting it, just I haven't had time to edit it. I've got like five or six videos that I've shot that are just sitting there waiting to be edited. Uh, and that's, that's been the holdup. It's not because I have not been producing content. It's just haven't had time to get it edited. So, But there's more coming. I've, I've got some product reviews uh, coming out. Uh, so if, if you are curious about some of the new products that are out there in the video production industry, be sure and stay tuned. And be sure and like and subscribe to the video as well. So anyway, that's going to about do it now for now. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And have a fantastic day.